Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to my channel where we focus on using ordinary materials to make beautiful things. Today I'm going to show you how I like to play with magazine images to make paper dolls. Um, I have been in love with paper dolls since I was a child. I used to adore playing with them. I would trace around their clothes so that I could color something and make new things and I'd cut things apart and rearrange them and anything you could do to a paper doll, I pretty much did. So I've, I've had a love affair with paper for many decades. Um, so I'm gonna show you a few that I've already made so we can see kind of what's, what's what, where we're going today. Uh, so I have a variety of sizes. These are magazine images that I have just kind of doctored, added things to. Um, so this one is my little, she has a little crown. I, I think this one's cute. Um, I know this is going to be on YouTube after Valentine's Day, but I think she's a cute little Valentine's Valentine's person. Or she could even, um, yeah, she could she could just be, you know, pink and love, and she's got like the little the little pink ribbon, um, maybe for breast cancer awareness, something like that. But she's really cute. I liked her. Uh, and then this one I thought was fun. This this person, this is a picture of a ballet dancer. And so I gave her a new dress and um, some very dramatic butterfly wings. Moving my mat around here. Um, this person, I can't remember who she is. She's this, These are all from uh, a couple of the magazines that, that I subscribe to. Um, I get, a lot of times you get offered free subscriptions from like credit card companies and things like that. And you get, you know, six issues free or something. So I always take them because I cut them up uh, for images. So I thought this one was a lot of fun with all the different kinds of ribbon and lace. Um, I don't know if you can you can tell, I have used some metallic watercolor to color her the top of her dress. Um, this one too has a little metallic watercolor on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was just solid black, uh, flat, like a flat black. And this one too, uh, was a different color. Um, actually, I think you can kind of tell she didn't, she had sort of a crop top and, and and an open midriff and I just painted over it to make it look like there was a sash there. So you can use all kinds of paper things. You can use bits and pieces of lace. Um, I, almost everybody has butterfly wings because I really like butterfly wings on paper dolls. I don't, I don't know why. I feel like it's, you know, makes them part fairy, part angel, part, I don't know what, part butterfly maybe. Um, this one has uh, some just scraps of, of uh, just like leftover paper scraps. And then there's, there's some stickers that I made. Oh, I think it's probably last Wednesday when we upcycled the, the uh, address labels. These are some of those address labels, and then this is these are just little gold stickers on there. Um, I gave her kind of a halo, part halo with with a, with a little flower. Some of them have hats, like this one has a little hat. This is a napkin that I decoupaged onto just some some scrap paper, and then I added. She's holding this branch with you know and some butterflies and. I took one of the extra flowers from the napkin and, and made her a little hat uh, and gave her some wings. And again, I painted I painted what she was wearing in a metallic. I love this one. So this one doesn't have butterfly wings. This one has bee wings. Um, she has a book page for a skirt, but then I gave her some little stripes down here reminiscent of, of the stripes on a bee. Um, I did repaint her gloves and top. She's holding a couple of bees here. Her hat is um, one of the, the beekeeper beehives with the bees coming out of it like in a big plume. So I made kind of a plume out of it. So this one, this one's really one of my favorites. I think this would be really cute to do like a layout called Queen Bee, you know, and then, and then put it on there. Um, this one has, again, pieces of lace and, and ribbon and Rick rack and I mean not just all kinds of little things, but it is a it is just a decoupaged um, book book page in the back, so there's all kinds of little book page things um, on it, and then it's just decorated. Again, she was painted up here 
and given she's given some trim on her belt so I think she's pretty fancy and then the last one I have is a mermaid right because you know when you can be anything be yourself unless you can be a mermaid isn't that how that goes um, so the mermaid this is uh, some more of the stickers that we made last Wednesday out of upcycling those address labels so these are some of those and I just covered her her mermaid skirt that I that I cut out I, I covered it um, in blue on one side right I covered it all the way down and then I realized when I put this mermaid dress on her that I had to make her a mermaid so I covered some of the back and folded her up her wings are shells and then of course she's wearing a, a shell hat with a little shell fan she's holding a shell here and she's listening to another shell here when I saw her the picture with her hand held up that way I knew she had to have been listening to something and so uh, it just had to be a shell so these are a lot of fun to make and you can do pretty much anything you want with them um, like I said I I just kind of have a stash of magazines I keep some of the magazines a lot of them I just cut things out of and then I use the other pages as, you know, someplace to glue uh, so that I don't get it on my table. So I just went through and pulled out um, some images that I have. These may be a little big, honestly. I, I like these, but they're, but they're a little large because by the time we added a dress to her, she would be, you know, she'd be really, she'd be like way down here, right? If we added a dress to her, cause she's pretty big. She's not that big, but she is like, you know, if you think about where her legs would be down to here, that is that is fairly large, which is not saying you can't do that if you wanted her to stick out of something or if you wanted to do her as something separate, a separate uh, doll, or you could even um, do like an accordion fold so that she, she's here and then she folds down over herself so that she pops up out of the book when you when you put her in on a journal page so it's not that you can't do a big one um, but they are a little more unwieldy when you put them in a, put them in a book I like this one um, black and white's okay don't you know don't shy away necessarily from black and white most of them that I had over here were color uh, but this one was black and white and I really like it a lot because you get a nice contrast with the with the colors of the the dress um, this one was black and white. I added some of the metallic, so she, she was black and white to begin with. Um, so if it's a black and white photo, that's fine. Uh, it's, it's okay. It'll give you maybe better contrast with some other colors. And look too, I always look at how they're standing. Let me move some of these out from under so it's not so distracting maybe. I look at how they're standing. Um, you know, is this something I can cut out around her hand? And give her a skirt here and drop it to here and make a different waistline I could cut along here and put the skirt behind so it comes under this um, so it doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult to cut out around I can tell you that is one of the things that I look at um, you know how much how much am I gonna lose cutting out around it um, this one like I would lose some of this on her hair I just would because you can cut that but I wouldn't <laughs> so uh, you know, and here we could, you know, you can you can use this as her waist and then cut all of this out. Her hand could be here and then you could drop in a new skirt. It could be a ball gown kind of thing if you wanted it to be. This one might be a bit of a challenge because of the coat. On the other hand, it might be kind of fun because we could cut where the pants are and just cut here and leave the coat. Um, and whatever skirt we have, we'll just have to tuck the hand in so it looks like the person's hand is in a skirt pocket. Um, but we could do that uh, and, you know, and, and make this into more of a streamlined dress. So that could be fun. I've, I haven't done one with two people together, but I thought this one might be worth a try. Um, they're, they're sort of sitting, but they're kind of kind of leaning more than sitting. So, you know, we could cut this one here, leave the hand and cut this out and, and put in a new dress and we could do kind of the same thing here. Um, and so you can, you know, once you apply the dress to the top or you put this, cut it off and put it behind 
um, the rest of this is, is gonna be kind of moot, right? So it's really just from there up that we're gonna see. I like this one, but I just like the movement of the dress and stuff here, but I thought this would be a good one because she has a definite waistline that we could, you know, you could drop in. It already has a big dress, so it would look good with kind of something that shape. We could even use this to cut out the shape if we wanted to, um, you know, we can cut this out and around and use that as the template if you wanted to do that. This one, the person is kind of squatting down, but that doesn't mean we couldn't like go here and cut and have this, you know, this very regal looking woman. I, I love the look on her face. Her eyes are beautiful and she's very regal looking. So, you know, we could, we could use that one. This one's a little more irreverent. <laughs> and again, it's a black and white photograph, but don't worry about that. Uh, so we have the jacket, but we could paint it in a metallic color so we can always dress it up and, and put a skirt or something in here instead of the jeans, right? And we can have it come out. We can kind of use this as sort of, you know, like a trumpet something if we wanted to, or we can design something totally different. I thought this one would be a good choice again because we can stop it at the waist. This one's already, you know, kind of shiny. Um, stop it at the waist and we've got a hand so we could put something in her hand here if we wanted to um, If we cut it here her shoulder would just be back and we wouldn't see the other hand and then we could Put in whatever kind of dress we wanted and the same kind of thing with this one um, We there's this is very boxy But if we wanted to cut in we could as we cut we can kind of cut in and make a waist here and then superimpose our own dress on it so all of those I think are good choices. Um, the first step to any of them is to uh, get, get some clear gesso down on top of them so that we can either paint or glue things on them more easily, take away a little bit of that shininess so they're a little easier to work with. Um, when you look at, at these, I, I put some clear gesso on and then I was able to, to use watercolor paint over the top uh, to add some metallics. You can add any kind of paint you want once you do that. I really like on this one her her little feet, you know, I've, I've, I left her shoes there and painted her shoes to match her dress. <laughs> so I think that one's fun. Um, so that is step one, is to just put some, put some gesso on. Uh, and I've got Liquitex clear gesso. So that's, that's what I'm going to use. Um, if you don't have gesso, I think you could probably use a little bit of uh, flat Mod Podge maybe to, uh, to get things going. And I'm not gonna worry about gessoing the bottom of the dress. I'm just gonna kinda hit the gesso where I think I might use it. All right, so I'm not, I'm not worried about this part down here. Um, I'm only really worried about here and down to her hand. So that's that's plenty. We just need to hit it with some gesso. Her I'm going to do a little more because I think I'm going to try to keep her coat. So I want to be sure I cover the coat because I'm thinking I might paint that coat out in like a really cool purple or something. And just to, just to get something really fantasy. I, I feel like this looks like something that could be very Alice in Wonderland. So I'm thinking like a purple coat and you know, maybe something that's Mad Hatter, Mad Hatter looking. And again, I think from about the waist up, but I wanna be sure, I wanna be sure I get her hands and whatever part of her hair I'm gonna keep. Um, a lot of the hair that's flying out here is gonna get cut off, uh, but if I gesso over this, I can kind of cut it off and I can draw some stuff in or we can kind of leave a little halo. So you can see it's magazine, so it's kind of wrinkling up a little bit. As it dries, it should flatten back out. Um, the other ones that I showed you did the same kind of thing. They, they wrinkle and uh, then they, they flatten back out. If they don't go quite flat, uh, once they're dry, put them under a book for for a little while and just let them flatten back out. Just put a heavy book on top of them. Okay, 
All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna keep gessoing these. Uh, so when we come back, they will be dry and I will have probably cut a little more closely around them. Like some of them, I just kind of cut the, the general image when I cut them out of the magazine. Some of them, I take the whole page, but we will, I will have um, maybe cut a little more, a little more closely so that we can go on to the next step. So I'll see you in a few. All right, we're back to do a little painting. I've already painted most of the of the people and cut them out, but I thought I'd do a couple here where we're gonna paint and then we can move on to the next step since the other ones are uh, almost dry. I am using metallic, uh, it says semi watercolors. It says Art Philosophy is the name of the, the brand and I got it at Paper Source. Um, I love these, I love these watercolors. So you can see they're well and truly loved and used. They're kind of a mess, uh, but they're, they're metallic and I, I love them because I'm all about metallics. Um, I, anything that's glittery and glowy and metallic-y, you know, that's, that's just kind of my world. So as you can see, I have cut the women down. I've, I've just kind of cut out. Uh, this one was very boxy, so I gave her more of an hourglass shape because that's kind of the shape I'm looking for on the dresses. Not that I would ever want to wear a corset to get that shape, but it's, it's nice to look at. Um, and I've been watching uh, oh, Gilded Age is the name of the show, uh, which is set in New York at the same time as Downton Abbey. So I'm, I'm watching all these women in these, in these corseted dresses and they're beautiful. I wouldn't want to wear them, but they're pretty. Uh, so I was, I just kind of cut this in to get more of that hourglass shape. Uh, and I will show you how I draw the skirts and, and things in just a minute on a book page, but we're going to go ahead and paint her. Um, I'm, as I said, I'm using a water, a water-based paint. So sometimes uh, magazine pages curl up a little bit uh, when you use something that's water-based, um, but they do tend to flatten back out pretty fast, just like they did if you, if you had some curling based on, uh, or from putting on the clear gesso. Apparently I can't do two things at once and, you know, cleaning my brush and I can't seem to talk and, and do that at the same time. Um, so if you get a little curling, it's fine. It, it should flatten back out. Uh, but if, if it doesn't, then I'll put it under a book and let it, let it flatten out a little bit once it's dry. Um, I'm using the, the watercolors, but you could use paint markers um, you could probably use uh, Sharpies, anything like that. Uh, since, since it has a coat of clear gesso on it, that leaves you pretty open to any material you would want to, want to use to paint or color. And you don't have to um, if, you like, if you like the way the top looks without painting it, then don't paint it. I, I find that the clothes and things in magazines tend to be colors I, I am not probably going to use in, in my page or it just doesn't have the feel I want. Uh, so, you know, if I throw a little, if I throw a little paint on it, it just, it just makes it look different and it's not so photograph looking even though the face and the hands and things still are. Um, it kind of just kind of just takes some of that out and it adds another layer of the, you know, I made it myself kind of homemade look to it. Um, you can go through with a darker color and put the wrinkle lines and stuff back in if you want to. I have on a couple I'll show you in a minute, um, but I don't always do that. It, it seems to me by the time I uh, get a skirt on it and things like that, that it's, it's not really gonna make much of a difference. 
and you can see a lot of with the watercolor, you can kind of still see a lot of the lines through. Um, so we'll set that one aside and let it dry. Just a moment, doesn't take long. Oops. I also tend to um, move towards, see I've made a mess of my mat now. I tend to uh, lean towards blues, greens, and pinks when I'm doing this. Um, those are just the colors I like. So any color you like. Um, it might be fun to do this with ink, to you know use some of the Tim Holtz ink and apply with a brush, like put it off the side and, and get it all brushed. This was fun. When I cut this out, I realized um, that her hand, it, it wasn't a pocket. I thought her hand was in a pocket, but it's not really a pocket. It's almost like a little mitten. So I thought that was kind of fun. Um, let's see, what color should we do her? I like purple too, so let's do a little purple on here. And I've cut below, I cut a little bit below the waist so I can either um, cut some off and put the person in front of the skirt or I can put the skirt in front of the person. And I usually make that decision um, once I do the skirt and kind of have a look at it. And, but if I need to cut some of it off, I can. So there's a little bit below the waist here or we can use it as a dropped waist. So this one, you're definitely gonna be able to see the different uh, contrasting colors behind it. Yeah, I just went over some of her hair. It's okay. So, one of the reasons I use the purple is it's a little more opaque than some of the other ones. And I could put a little bit more, a little bit more paint in her midriff area. Although the shadow behind it is not, I mean, I'm never going to get rid of the, the contrast there. But it's okay because by the time we decorate it, I really just don't think, I don't think a lot of it shows up as much as you think it's going to. And also, we can, if we wanted to make a skirt, we could pull the skirt all the way up to here and it would just look like a belt almost. And then we can drop some jewelry and stuff. So it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't even necessarily look like uh, that you can see her undergarment kind of there, which really it's not her undergarment. She's wearing it over, over a shirt. So I guess that's an overgarment, not an undergarment, isn't it? So that's a... Uh, Put a little bit of paint on her mitten down here too. Not really sure. It was, I thought it was a pocket, but then as I was looking at the detail of the picture, I realized it, it really wasn't. So I am not a connoisseur of high fashion, so I'm not always sure what things are. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna set her aside as well. I'm gonna wipe this off. Um, so the next step really is to create a skirt for for each of the, the people. So I usually just use a book page. I've done a couple, and I'll show you, and then we'll do one. So I usually just use a book page, and I, I set the, the person down, and I kind of just draw a general shape so that I can then use that to do, I can decorate this and attach her. Um, so that's that's sort of the idea. So let's grab, let's grab a book page. Um, if you're not sure what, you know, what shape of skirt you want, you can uh, take a look online at some different shapes. Uh, so I, I just looked at some different shapes and just did some very general basic skirt shapes. Uh, these are not, you know, great drawings. It's just kind of a basic idea. I tend to like either kind of a mermaid looking shape 
or more of a ball gown, or as I said, after having watched Gilded Age, um, I'm sort of liking the bustles and stuff right now too. So, you know, any shape you want to draw is fine. And you don't have to, you don't have to be great at drawing. These are not fabulous drawings. They're just uh, something, you know, to, to put down. Um, let's see. Let's pick somebody. And we'll draw a skirt for them. So I have this person that I kind of did in blue and sort of a silvery white. And I'm not really sure. I think her hand, I'm, I might end up cutting between here, um, but I'm not, I'm not really sure how that's gonna go yet. I feel like she looks like she needs more of a column dress. Maybe, maybe something that comes down and then flares out a little bit, um, kind of a mermaid. Uh, maybe looking something would be good. Um, so I just kind of put them down. Now I think I want something that's a column here. And just kind of draw a basic shape. I'm probably going to have to pick up her arm a little bit here. To get that straight down from here. And she might be going someplace really fancy. I don't know. Or not. Right. So, let's see. I always like to do it fairly long. Um, just because it's easier to cut it off than it is to add on to it. And I think it makes them look, you know, it's like I, I like the tall kind of. So... You know, if I've got a torso, I do probably one and a half or so, one and one and a third longer than the than the torso, and that may not be the right proportion. I don't know. It's just kind of the one I'm looking at, and so I'm looking at her. That may be a little tall for her, so we may want to move it down, and I can do that and kind of just make a mark about where I think about where I think the top of the skirt is, and then I can leave this behind it when I cut it out, because this gives me a place to glue. Um, so I can glue this part back here. So it's gonna go like that. So I like the column. I wonder about, I wonder about adding a flare, like a little mermaid kind of. Should we make her a mermaid? And so I didn't quite get those even. So when I cut it out, I can kind of fold it a little bit and and do one so that it looks it looks a little even. So let's let's cut that out really fast, and you'll see what I mean. So I'm just gonna leave a little space around the mermaid part because I know I didn't get it even. Oh, my scissors are squeaking. So I know I didn't get that even. My heavens, my scissors are squeaking. That's a weird noise. Okay, so do I like this one, this one? This one feels like it's a little bit better, a little bit better uh, shape. So I'm just gonna cut the column, I'm gonna cut the column, fold the column down. And I'm going to follow that one. And now I have a pretty even shape. And if I think I'm, I'm not going to cover all of the pencil somehow, I can erase it. Or because this one's a column, I can, I can turn it over and do it that way. Either way, I, I'm either going to collage all over the dress or I'm gonna cover it with washi tape. It's it's gonna be covered. This is just something that is the pattern for the dress. So it doesn't make any difference really what I do it on. You can do it on scraps. That was a, a book page. Um, let me show you some of the other ones I've cut. So she gets that one. She's going to get 
that one, which I think I already showed you. Um, let's see. This little lady we painted, I had already cut one out for her. And so I think she's gonna go on the outside. Um, a lot of the ones that I had done before that I showed you, the the top part of the, the, the part of the person, the torso, went to underneath. I drew the skirt to go on to go over it. Um, but some of these I'm drawing under, so I can move her down a little bit, maybe. I don't know, maybe up here. And so that kind of gives her, you know, a, a willowy kind of silhouette. Um, let's see. Here's one that's more, a little more rounded ball gown looking. So she can go like that. It's more of a bottle kind of, bottle kind of shape. Right? And then it's just a matter, it's just a matter of decorating. Um, Here's one that kind of has a bustle, like I've been looking at on, on television, which I kind of I kind of like the idea. She's got this really kind of skimpy top and then this kind of bustle, bustle skirt. It's kind of fun, the juxtaposition. So you can see it's just it's just kind of a line. You just sort of put the person down and, and draw a basic kind of skirt out around it on a book page. Um, I like to decorate the skirt and then attach the person and finish up the details. So uh, we will do that uh, next. Um, let me grab a few things to decorate some of these with. I'll, I'll grab some, some cutouts and some washi tape, maybe some flowers, some different things, and I will be right back. Hi, I'm back. I have gathered some scraps. Um, I have lots of scraps. I have big tubs of scraps, but I, I pulled out a few things that might be of interest. So I just, I have some painted paper scraps. I have a little bit of different book page. This is from a vintage book. I have a little piece of newspaper. I have some music. Um, I have some pieces of map. These are vintage map pieces from the early 60s. Um, then I also found this uh, magazine page that I had already created a collage on with music paper. So I thought that might be something good that, that we could just use as a basis. So if you have something like this, then you can kind of, you know, just start off, start off your you're collaging with that and then you don't even have to worry too much about uh, collaging all of it. So I put my pencil away so you know this is I always when I do um, just collage fodder paper things like this I usually do it on a magazine page because they're thinner and it's easier to, let's see, maybe this way. It's uh, it's easier than to use it later, like what I'm doing now. Makes it a lot quicker. And that's one of those things you can just use up your scraps and, oh, I have so many scraps. I keep watching videos, you know, scrap buster video, what to do with all those scraps. <laughs> I have so many scraps that I'm never going to get through them all. <laughs> I think at some point I might actually have to throw some away. I know that's kind of hurts my soul to say that, but so in this case, because I don't have to necessarily collage on the, on the paper, I, I can kind of save that and maybe use that skirt again for something else. For a different person but now I kind of have this ready-made oops I have to glue that down a little but that gives us a ready-made base which I love that's fabulous um, so at this point we could probably go ahead and glue her on just to be able to start because we can start embellishing now I like to do the background and get that done and then 
glue the, the person on. And I say person because you don't have to necessarily use women. You could use guys too. I haven't done any, but oh, my glue's not gonna stick today. I haven't done any, but I keep looking at them thinking they would be, they would be fun. Um, now I have a piece of glue there. So, so there's our basic, our basic person. Um, and I'm thinking I'm kind of getting on this paper doll kick. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to do lots of these, not just, not just these. So I have that little stack that I showed you to start with. And then we're making some of these today. I think I'm going to have to do some guys so that they have, you know, maybe guys handing women something or whatever. Um, I think I'm going to have to do some where they're part animals or maybe animals dressed, you know, with a dress. I might have to cut out an animal head and put it on a dress from a magazine, um, you know, which is kind of reverse of what we did. We cut off the dress and put on a new dress. But if we, you know, if we cut, if we had taken the dress and then added an animal head to it, like, let's look at, we can just look through this magazine see in here somewhere if I can find I've already cut this up so if we took this dress and we cut out this part right here and put an animal behind it and put their paws <laughs> that would be fun wouldn't it so I'm thinking I'm gonna have to just play with the whole the whole paper doll thing and, and pretty much every iteration that I can think of okay so I like this she's got a pink top and this kind of old-fashioned looking bottom. She's got some flowers here. Um, let's see what I've got. I've got my tub with some flowers in it. So that's a drawing. Might be nice. I think I, you know, I just have to audition stuff. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but. I can't just look at it and decide that that's what I want. I have to, I have to kind of cut it out and lay it on and decide. You know, I like that. I have to, I have to play with it. I just can't. We might have to find something for a hat for her. That's way too big, but this is pretty. Right now, I'm just digging in a box. I just have a, a box over here. I have some more of those. I don't even know where those came from. They look like it came off of packaging, some kind of packaging. So that might be nice to have, you know, they kind of go together here. They all have that drawing quality to them, their illustrations. I like that. I like that she's holding this on top. I'd have to tuck some other things in behind it there. We could tuck in a little bit of lace or a bigger flower or something else. Let's see what else do I have. These are pretty. I know they're kind of large scale, but sometimes the larger scale stuff looks good. So, okay, so I know I like those things so I just have to I'm just gonna have to audition a couple things I have to I can't make up my mind until I've seen a few choices I'd like to be able to say that I can just pick something and decisively put it down but I cannot these are pretty Too much I think yeah maybe not so far I like the others so <laughs> this is what takes so long right I'm I'm good until we get to the, the part where I'm supposed to decorate and then I just have to I just have to play with it oh, look at these little butterflies on here these are cute so 
the front of a greeting card. Do you keep your greeting cards and cut them up? I certainly do, which is why I have so much stuff. That's why I have too much. Okay, I'm gonna just kinda lay that down because I know I'm gonna have to cut these things out better, but if I kinda have three little things kinda following the line of her dress. Right, and then maybe a butterfly. I like this one too because it's glittery. There's another one. Oh, then I just tore it. <laughs> okay. And we're going to give her butterfly wings too. Right. So that one. Oh, y'all, I just have way too much stuff. Way too much. I have these stickers. Those are pretty. Do we like those better? Hmm, maybe. Maybe those are better. Okay, now I'm gonna have to figure out where the where the opening is. Oh, it's not at the bottom. Usually it is. These came from Dollar Tree. So I got something like that. My and my experience with the stickers like this is that it's not really going to stick until I, you know, actually put some glue on it and make it make it stick. These are pretty because they have a little bit of dimension to them. Uh, see, I like this because it's since it's got a little bit of bling and stuff on it already, it's going to be kind of a quick, quick decorate. I can put one there. Not the butterfly now. I like that. You could put the butterfly in her hair. Here. Not sure the butterfly really goes with it. Not quite. Not quite loving that butterfly. Does she need does she need a hat? Maybe we could make a little hat for her. Oh, she definitely needs a hat. Okay. Alright, I honestly I like this. <laughs> so I am going to go ahead and put a little glue on it and glue that down. I'm just gonna glue her hand down too since she's holding those flowers. Um, these are not very sticky stickers. Oh my gosh, how did I have that? Was it this way? I think it was this way. So, you know, once you once you get the skirt, it's just a matter of however you want to decorate it. So, you can you can decorate it like you would a whole page. You can decorate it in a theme to go on a page. I'm thinking this would be really cute on a garden, some kind of garden page with maybe a quote about flowers. And what is that quote? I must have flowers always and always. Oops. So I, I think, you know, it can be as simple as this. I already had, already had that little collage page done. 
So that's finished. Oh, should we but should we put some butterfly wings on her? Maybe we should. If she's a flower, butterflies are flowers that fly, right? Okay, I can't remember who said all these quotes. <laughs> and this, I think, we can just slide on. No, I think we're going to take it apart. and re-glue it because we can't get it quite up where it needs to be. So. If you want to make a hat out of something else, you can always just cut a little slit uh, in the picture where her head will fit through. So, Or you can do a front and a back like this. There we go. there. She definitely needs a hat. And now I have glue on my fingers and so they're sticking to the paper. <laughs> Having trouble. I like that. That's good. We could, I suppose, have put, you know, a different flower thing in her hand, but I kind of like the, the juxtaposition there. All right, um, maybe some butterfly wings. Let's see, do I have some butterfly wings in kind of a pinky color? It's orange. These are pretty. And we could always cut them and cut it in half. Do we like these better? Those look more like a cape. I like these, <clears throat> but I think I'm gonna have to cut it in half. Um, the other problem too is this is a sticker, so I'm gonna have to put it on a piece of scrap paper so that I can find this paper here, so that I can cut it out and glue it on because otherwise, it's just going to be sticky on the back and it's not going to stay anywhere. So let's move this stuff. Let's cut those out really fast. can't believe how easy this was. Sometimes I struggle for a really long time. Um, and I tend not to use stickers very often. So maybe, maybe now I've found a good use for them. Maybe they're good for, for decorating the dolls. Because I always feel like on a whole page, maybe they just don't quite work. But I think maybe in this concentrated smaller area, with a, you know, with a definite theme where I want it to go together as part of her dress and her hat. I want it all to look like it coordinates. Whereas on a page, I a lot of times want it to look a little more random. Uh, not, not that it goes together. But I think, you know, when you're thinking about a dress or getting dressed or something, we always think about being coordinated and fixed all fixed so that, you know, although there was that show, you know, what not to wear that <clears throat> they used to say, it, it doesn't match, it goes. <laughs> so <laughs> there is that. See, now that we've cut them apart, we can move them out a little bit. That's a little heavy on her head, but that's okay because when I put it in a book, see, so that will just, we'll just glue that like that because then when we put it in a book, I'm gonna glue it down anyway, so it will stay, and that gets her wings out a little more. So when we can play with the wings, we can put them up a little higher, down a little lower. I like them there. 
I think everybody needs butterfly wings. I'm, and I like her like this. I, I'm actually happy that I've found some stickers and I found something that I had already collaged and, and now this one is, you know, done and done. It's quick and done. So you can see it can be very, very straightforward and simple. You can make it as complicated as you want. Some of the other ones I sewed lace on, I glued layers and layers of ribbon. Um, so it's up to you, whatever you want to do with it. Once you have the construction down, you know, it's the, you, you're totally free to do it any way you want. So I hope you enjoyed uh, our time today. I know I did. I, I know I'm always pleasantly surprised when things just kind of pop together and, and makes me happy. So I am, I am going to probably continue working on you know, my whole stack here of dolls, and maybe next time we can put them in a, a layout somewhere. Um, we'll see. I, I have some other things, you know, on the agenda too, things that we can make. So we'll we'll contemplate what we can do, or maybe we'll try some different paper dolls with, with guys or with animals. That would be fun. We might do that too. I just get off on a tangent. All right, thank you for joining me. I'm so happy you're here. Remember, in the meantime, since I, until I see you again, use what you have to make your life more beautiful. Have a great day. Bye.